in most um, forms of small-scale politics, there's some kind of dividing line between the insider discourse and the outsider discourse. And within my life, nowhere was this more dramatic than in First Nations politics. So First Nations is the term we use in Canada to refer to American Indians, to Native Canadians, whatever you want to say. First Nations is the term we use for that. The people who were in Canada, the, de the descendants of the people who were in Canada prior to European colonialism. My engagement with those politics, ethnically I have no Native blood. I am a white person, to be blunt. And um, I showed up, I enrolled in the Native languages, I started studying Korean Ojibwe, and I did so openly with an interest in the politics and the future of those languages and those cultures in Canada, which is different from many white men. Many white men are only interested in the past, they're only interested in history, they're only interested in a kind of museological approach, which is to say they're interested in how that culture is going to be put into a museum and remembered, or they're interested in studying folklore and tradition from the past. And for me, I was really thinking about the political present and the political future. And a lot of First Nations people I was talking to got very excited about me and my research and the positive contribution I could make for that reason. Um, to give one example, I remember I used to talk to people about doing research about the Vietnam War, about First Nations peoples and their memories of and their involvement with the Cold War, you know, the era when people in Canada, really, especially in Northern Canada, were really justifiably terrified that a huge war between the United States and Russia was going to happen any time involving nuclear weapons. Um, when I talk about that kind of stuff, people, they, they would just get incredibly excited because they never met anyone who even thought about First Nations that way. You know what I mean? When they met white people, they would, t they would think about, they would imagine our native people as if they lived in the ancient past, and they don't. They live in the modern world. You know, they eat pizza, and they drive cars, and they join the army, and they sit and watch the evening news, and they wonder, oh my God, is there going to be a nuclear war that's going to destroy the world as we know it? And they worry about the same ecological and political problems that white people do, although from a different perspective. And of course, they have the unique challenge of trying to prevent their own languages from going extinct, to some extent preventing their own culture, their own dances, their own music, their own religion from going extinct. So there are, of course, unique aspects, but fundamentally, they're living in the 21st century, just like you and me. But when I was involved with First Nations politics, and again, I kind of show up just saying, look, I'm a talented guy. I've worked on a lot of obscure languages before. I've worked on a lot of very difficult political problems before. This is my background in politics. This is my background in languages, including indigenous ethnic minority languages. I want to do something positive. This is who I am, but with no claim to being an insider. It was amazing to me how quickly I made the transition from being involved in the outsider discourse to being involved in the insider discourse. So as an example of this, you know, um, several times when I was on the First Nations University campus, people said to me in this very strangely confessional way, like as if they were telling me something really bad they were ashamed of, they'd say, oh, you know, um, I'm doing a project up on the fourth floor. Now, I'm sorry if I forget, maybe it was the third floor. This is from memory, I forget, but it was just a floor like that. And I'd seen that floor, like I'd been there. It looked like any other floor in any other, you know, office building. So, at first, I did not get the significance of that at all. And, you know, I would kind of say, oh, you know, good for you. So, what's, you know, what's your project? What are you, what are you working on? And then again, they'd say in a really kind of reluctant way, as if they're confessing to you that they're dealing drugs or doing something really, really bad. I'd say, oh, you know, it's this project um, to try to help kids who've dropped out of school. Or they'd say, oh, you know, it's this project to study um, access to hospitals. Really positive things. So again, at first, I just don't get, like, what's, <laughs> why are you talking about it this way, you know? And I'd say, oh, wow, that's great. I'm, I'm really happy for you, you know? And, and I would say, like, oh, that's great. That sounds like a wonderful project, you know? Or maybe I'd say, oh, that reminds me of a project I did in Cambodia, you know, on a similar issue, you know? And they'd kind of look at me and, and squint and look down at their feet and they'd say, well, it's only short term, you know, it's only a contract, it'll only be a couple of months. Like, as if they're talking about something really bad. <laughs> so, later I figured out what it was. When they were saying the project was on the fourth floor, that was code for, it's not my project, and it's not the university's project, and it's not a project that answers to the indigenous government, the First Nations government. It's a project funded by and controlled by the federal government, by the Canadian government, by, you know, the kind of evil political enemies 
of the native people, which I didn't know at all. I didn't know in terms of insider politics versus outsider politics. I had no way of imagining, you know, how was I going to guess? The floor that it's on tells you where the money's come from, tells you who's in charge. You know, it's a great example of um, insider politics versus outsider politics, right? But those are the things you learn. Um, it's a little disturbing to me that right now, I mean, in terms of insider politics versus outsider politics and veganism, we kind of have all these dotted lines that are supposed to be about who hates who, who's sleeping with who, who supports whose career in terms of making money, who's willing to lie and defame who, etc., etc. You know, um, I made a video ages ago. It's not that good a video, to be honest with you. I looked back at it a couple of weeks ago because I remembered it fondly, but I made a video that was called drama not meaningless drama and in that video I said look I'm not against drama but we gotta have drama about meaningful important things and the recent controversy in my channel illustrates that where I was really talking about look I'm, I'm happy to address you know the, what my own comments on Gary Yarovsky and Gary Francione and abolitionism serious political issues serious questions about effective activism and philosophy and politics and veganism Let's let's break it down. Let's talk about it. Let's let's really talk about it. I'm even I'm totally willing to talk about okay an ethical issue and an intellectual issue, like I'm saying Nina and Randa did something immoral in endorsing Taco Bell in advertising Taco Bell. It's just a comment made in passing to illustrate, but that's a really serious issue, and I think it I think that could raise all kinds of debate and discussion. Doesn't, but I'm just saying this is more substantive. But I mean, if you want to take that video that raises all of those points and more and talks about Breeze Harper and uh, Will Tuttle and the World Peace Diet and raises the issue of kind of Buddhist and Hindu mysticism within uh, veganism. There are so many big issues for us to debate and for us to have drama about in that one video. There is so much there, and it links to and shows on screen videos I've made addressing this in the past. You want to take that and reduce it to being a hot or not video. That's what you want to make it into. You know what I mean? You want to turn this into a drama about, you know, who would you rather or who's who's hot and who's not. And I just got to say, no, that's not what the video is about. And that's not what the drama should be about if you're really vegan, if you're really concerned about the uh, the future of the movement, et cetera, et cetera. You know, talk about that too. But, I mean, I raised that issue for a very clear purpose, for a point, et cetera. I made the point. And now let's, you know, let's let's not have meaningless drama. If you want to have drama with me, you know, let's let's really do it. Um, now, the first time I ever heard the name Jeff Nelson, because I didn't know the guy. To me, he wasn't famous. Um, I, you know, this is all micro fame. A few thousand people know who you are, and a lot of people start to think of themselves as famous. So the first time I ever heard Jeff Nelson's name was when one of my fans, a uh, supporter on Patreon, sent me an email with screenshots of his conversation with Jeff Nelson. I didn't know who Jeff Nelson was, but this supporter of mine on Patreon had written to Jeff saying that Jeff ought to take a stand against Durian Rider, what Durian Rider was doing in Chiang Mai. I was still in Chiang Mai, I think, and at that time Durian Rider was threatening to beat me up, um, etc. He was starting to beat me up, take me to the police station. At least once he talked about having me killed, but, you know, whatever. These these threats, along with, of course, very serious defamation and, and what have you. So, I think it was on Jeff's blog, his Tumblr or something. Jeff replied in a very kind of stupid way to this uh, supporter of mine writing to him and saying, look, this is a really important issue, you should take a stand on it. But I didn't write to Jeff, and when my fan, my supporter, sent me the screenshots of that... At that time, I did not know who Jeff Nelson was. So, you know, I took the name and Googled it, and I realized, like, oh, yeah, like, I'd seen his image before. I'd seen him in someone else's video or something like that. You know what I mean? It was like, oh, yeah, right, okay, that guy. Like, at some point, I'd seen him in some video from some festival or something, you know. And uh, at that point, I figured out, oh, okay, so there was this old website called Veg Source, and he's, you know, the manager of that. But I had no interest. I had no concern. I, I wasn't a fan, but I also didn't dislike him. Um, he was not part of my life in any which way. Now, months later, and I, I you know, I didn't care. Um, you know, also at that time when I looked into it, it seemed like well, Jeff was a guy who always supported Durian Rider, so it wasn't surprising he was going to continue to support Durian Rider. So that was it. I didn't give it any more thought. 
now at any stage of this why would i even bother talking to someone like jeff i want to talk about that for just a minute here what motivates me to reach out and talk to any vegans and as a side note it's always been especially sad and lamentable to me that people including durian rider denounced and defamed me for talking to hundreds of vegans where durian rider would say that i was this is proof that i was a bad person or up to no good that i had sent emails to hundreds of vegans and it's the opposite look i really reached out to you and of course when you talk about hundreds of vegans almost none of them are famous almost none of them are successful i'm not trying to get YouTube views out of it. Like even when you're talking about YouTubers, most of these people have 10 views on YouTube. They have YouTube channels that only their friends and family know about. But yeah, you know, you're damn right. Over the last three years, I have written emailed hundreds of vegans. Um, and it's for the cause. You know, I'm networking for that reason. For me, the only reason to reach out to someone like Jeff is really political. Take a sip. Hold on one second. Hmm. And I mean political in a very positive sense. Some people are here on YouTube for fame. Some people are here on YouTube for sex. Some people are here on YouTube for money. And, um, good luck. <laughs> there ain't much of any one of those three things to go around. But if that's what you're here for, you know, I don't even hate on the game. That's just a different game from what I'm playing. And I'm in the category of people where what positively motivates me, what rewards my behavior, what really makes this whole exercise worthwhile, is the dream, the dream of making a positive difference in the world. That's why I take the time to write to Jeff. That's why I take the time to write to Vegan Ava. That's why I took the time to apologize to Freely. Like, a lot of my behavior on the internet if you wonder, why did I bother talking to these people? And some of them are despicable and some of them are wonderful and most of us are a mix of the two. It really is the dream of making something positive happen in terms of real world vegan activism, in terms of the core, core issues of ecology, ethics, uh, veganism itself as a diet, if you like, et cetera, et cetera. And I've been through this stuff before. I mean not to digress from a digression, I had a supporter write to me saying, just lamenting, so terrible. You know, the conduct of these vegans is so terrible. It's so depressing. People are so, well, this is the worst community I've ever seen. Community that's not a community, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember I wrote back to her and said, well, I'll be honest with you, I've seen worse. Buddhism was worse. Um, my involvement with Buddhism as a community or as a political movement is worse. Uh, my my involvement with or my witnessing of you know left wing politics in Canada in general is worse. Um, what I saw in terms of the Green Party of Canada, ecological politics defined as ecology, not defined as vegan or animal rights, is worse. And there are movements I was not a part of, but that I witnessed the rise and fall of. If you look back at something like anarcho primitivism, that was really a big deal right up to about two thousand one, two thousand two. Um, that was really where a lot of the action was at before veganism took off as a, as a category. It's worse. <laughs> so, no, I've, I've seen worse things, as bad as this is. So, you know, my behavior in reaching out to these people and doing a lot of what I do is, in that sense, political. And it's very positive because it's based on the hope and the aspiration that you talk to enough of these people, you reach out positively, you see what do we have in common. These aspirations we have to, quote-unquote, to save the planet, to save the animals, to do something positive, or at least to promote a diet and lifestyle, because that is part of it. Can we work together and make something positive? And sometimes the answer is yes. I never thought I'd be friends with Vegan Gaines. It's an unlikely pairing. But Vegan Gaines is someone, I reached out to him back when his channel had only uh, a few thousand or a few hundred viewers. I think I think it was he was already at about 3,000. But, you know, he was a small channel when I first talked to him. And now here we are years later, and he and I, you know, have really become friends. I'm, I would have never expected that. Like, in terms of people I have things in common with, uh, I might have expected to instead become friends with someone like Kenya, who is also someone I reached out to and someone I've talked to this much, but we're not friends. Now, okay, that's probably because I am friends with Henya's ex-boyfriend. You know, there are other issues there, but whatever. I just say there's no way for me to judge before you reach out to people and try to make those connections. Who can you have a productive, collaborative relationship with? And even though, so at this stage, coming back to my story, um, I know, so Jeff Nelson's over 60 years old. 
why not? Why shouldn't Jeff Nelson and I become colleagues or friends? Like, just looking at it on the face, you know, why do I have less in common with Jeff Nelson than I do with Vegan Gains? <laughs> There's just no way off the bat. You got to approach people. I'm sorry. This is my advice to you. My advice to you is approach people with an open heart and an open mind and see if you can make something positive happen. And that's what I did with Jeff Nelson, even when he behaved like a scumbag towards me, even when he showed that he's as immature as any 16-year-old on the internet, even when he showed to me again and again that, you know, he's a despicable person by my standards. Um, you know, because, I, again, I wouldn't even call that optimism. It's just what motivates me. And I had someone asking me today, for whatever reason, he asked in a sort of overly humble way. He said, oh, sometime, could I appear on your channel? Could we do a podcast together or something? And he, he said to me, I don't know if you have some minimum standard. Like, you only have people on if they have only a certain number of thousands of viewers, thousands of subscribers. I said, no, 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 all the time, scroll through my channel. I've had people on my channel who had 30 viewers, 10 subscribers. I've promoted channels when nobody heard of them. And some of those channels have gone on to become popular, and some of them have remained unknown. But no, 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 anyone who's doing real content, anyone who's a sincere vegan, I'm out here trying to make those connections. And I'll just mention, unlike Jeff, uh, back when Durian Ryder defamed me and threatened to beat me up, a whole lot of those people stood up to be counted. So one that sticks out in my mind, there's a woman who mostly does uh, cooking videos and fitness videos. So just not my kind of thing. She's a vegan, but it's just different genre from me. And she uses the tag, you know, that vegan mom. And she said in the video, she said, look, you know, I know this guy and I trust this guy. To some, you know, she knows me and trusts me to some extent. Because um, I had written to her. I just sent her email back when her channel was pretty new. Back when nobody knew who she was. She had very, very few viewers. And then I just wrote to her in a totally sincere way, you know, talk about talk about veganism, etc. Uh, which is true. That's a pretty distant memory. That's a couple years ago. Like I say, her channel was new and nobody heard of it. And um, uh, it was just interesting. She was an example of someone for whom that just left a positive impression in memory. And she just came on camera and said, look, I know this guy or I know this guy enough to know that what he's doing is, is sincere and is motivated by real interest in vegan activism. And this is ridiculous to see him victimized this way. Now, we can talk about three categories of people here. There are people who did that, who just made some kind of positive comment about me. Or, you know, who even just privately sent me an email in sympathy. You know, that, that means a lot to me. There are all kinds of people that didn't make a video, or didn't make a public statement, but who just sent me an email saying, wow, man, I'm sorry to hear about this thing in Chiang Mai. This is really tough for you. You know, wish you the best. Whatever. Okay, that's one category of people. There are people who said nothing. It's another category of people. And then there were people like Jeff Nelson who waited for their chance to try to stunt, who waited for their chance to try to insult me and take Durian Ryder's side and try to gain notoriety and viewers through doing it. That's who Jeff Nelson was. He was in that third category. And before this, I didn't care about him. I didn't know who he was. But as I've just said at length, fundamentally, I was interested in trying to make something positive happen because he's a vegan and again if you just look on the surface why would vegan gains be my friend and not jeff nelson i don't know all like if all i know about jeff nelson is he's 60 years old and he cares about veganism i don't know who who am i closer to in age am i closer to jeff nelson in age or am i closer to vegan gains in age? I, I don't know i don't actually i don't know how old richard is actually i don't know how old vegan gains is but <laughs> you know okay you know whatever and you know someone like that even if they've insulted me on the internet i'm gonna give them a chance um i'm gonna say to them okay this is who i am you may have no idea who i really am because one apparently the only things you know about me come from durian rider now i think you have to be really pretty stupid to take durian rider at his word and not click on my channel and see my version of events i do think that that's uh you know, you, I'm losing confidence in your intelligence if this is your, your approach to life. But it, it was obvious to me at the start that um, Jeff, the little bit he knew about me was from nonsense Durian Ryder had said and maybe some of Durian Ryder's supporters had said on the internet. Okay, but I'm willing to give you the chance and I'm pretty confident that if you're basically an intelligent human being, um, you know, you're going to take a look at my videos or hear what I have to say 
and you're going to realize that I'm a sincere vegan. You may hate me anyway. You may disagree with me. It's fine. But, you know, you're not going to regard me as a shill secretly working for the meat and dairy industry. You're not going to regard me as a CIA agent trying to destroy veganism from within. You're not going to regard me as someone whose whole backstory is a lie, someone who's never been to university, someone who never lived in Laos and Cambodia. Because the level of defamation at the time wasn't just about my sex life. The level of defamation was so high, they created a whole parallel universe where everything is upside down, including the parallel universe in which I instigated the problem with Durian Rider, which is completely false, right? So it's, it's the ultimate victim blaming. It's blaming me for what Durian Rider did. So that's the foot you're starting off with Jeff Nelson. So uh, by the way, I'm recording this with, with comments coming alive. So someone asked, when did he insult you before calling his daughters ugly? Um, for one thing, I called them not beautiful. <laughs> And I very, I very, you know, specifically said that compared to other people who are going to be in Hollywood going to auditions for the same role, they do not stand out as strikingly beautiful. So that is a very reasonable criticism for anyone. And talent agents are going to tell you the same thing. A show business is tough. Um, I'm not going to be the only person to, to tell you something like that. And it's not, um, uh, this is not an outrageous uh, statement for anyone to make in any circumstances. But I didn't say ugly. I just said they're not beautiful. In that, in that context. But uh, when did he insult me? No, that was back at that time. So it's months ago now, but also a couple of months after the uh, conflict with Durian Rider was really popping. Okay, so I've just got to pause here. My lighting is kind of flashing in and out. <sighs> Sorry, guys. All right, there we go. So I mentioned this is my camera having trouble with the natural light and the artificial lighting being on screen at the same time. Uh, so just to clarify, so what was now again, also, I don't really mind the insults, but what Jeff Nelson said to me, what was insulting in my attempt to reply to it, he very quickly lost track of what he was saying and why he was saying it. Initially, what Jeff Nelson said in insulting me was that I should stand up for myself. Okay. Is the lighting going to stabilize here? Is the lighting all right? All right. Okay. You can see me. Um, so what Jeff said initially in insulting me publicly on YouTube, um, was that I should stand up for myself, i.e. versus Durian Rider. And then the, the second thing, sorry, so there are two categories of insult or approach here. And again, like it just shows that he only knew about the situation from Durian Rider, from lies that were told about me. He just didn't know what happened. But I don't know, like, I think it would be very easy for someone to take the opposite perspective. It would be easy to criticize me and say I stood up for myself too much. But no, his claim was that I ought to stand up for myself. Um, and then his second category of complaint, uh, sorry, he was claiming that I should have stood up for myself. And his second category of complaint, oh, right, was that I was in Chiang Mai for no good reason, that I had no excuse, that simply by being in Chiang Mai, it was all my fault and that I should be blamed for everything Durian Ryder did, including really criminal conduct. So that was Jeff's take on the time. Now, as stupid as those two statements are, because they are really stupid, if you're familiar with the general facts or situation of the case, they still are rational misconceptions that I can answer. You know, I can, I can reply to that. I can address um, what he misunderstood. All right, so my camera's acting up again here. I could close the drapes so that we just have artificial light. All right, let's see if we can make this work. And my response to him was to write to him, and I wasn't angry, but I said, look, Jeff, I, and by the way, Jeff has given me permission to read his emails on the internet. He stated that both privately and publicly. He encouraged me to do so. Uh, hi. Sorry, people saying hi to me from the audience. Welcome, welcome to chat. Jeff encouraged me to read his emails publicly on YouTube, and he did that just because he felt he had provided me with good advice. So there was no shade in that, but he said that I should take the advice I, that he'd given me and that I should discuss it uh, openly on YouTube. So, you know, that's fine. There was no, no, no malice in that. But anyway, at the time, I didn't get mad at Jeff. I saw him as somebody who, on the one hand, was really completely misinformed, someone who didn't know what even happened in Chiang Mai, either because he was listening to Durian Ryder or other people who were just as uh, much intentionally lying uh, as Durian Ryder. And also, frankly, he seemed to me stupid. He seemed to me stupid and to lack curiosity and to lack rigor. 
But Jeff did start it because at that time he came on the internet and insulted me repeatedly. He made two videos that were insulting towards me, but it was mostly in written comments, on YouTube written comments and on his blogs, his other platforms. And he started doing it then when I had already left Chiang Mai, I was already here in China, in Kunming. There was no reason for it aside from Jeff seeing an opportunity for his own self-promotion. And at that time, Jeff had kind of decided to stick his neck out and talk a lot of trash about Durian Rider, but he was it was a weird thing. He was still kind of supporting Durian Rider, but he was also talking trash about Durian Rider. It was just self-promotion on his part. And again, like, okay, so the two misconceptions I'm talking about. So misconception one, um, if you uh, think I didn't stand up for myself, well, I did. Durian Rider threatened to have a, a gang of thugs beat me up, and my re reply was, where do you want to meet? I was willing to get the teeth knocked out of my mouth. I was willing to bleed for this. I didn't care. And Durian Rider has turned that around and now claims that I was threatening him, which was never true. Durian Rider threatened me, but I didn't back down. Now, why did Durian Rider do that? We have a little bit of a uh, boiling frog scenario. Um, just So exactly one year earlier, Durian Rider did the same thing to a totally harmless and really boring guy on YouTube. Oh, God, what was his name? He changed his name to something like Astrological Numismatics. He was this guy, Passion and Fruit. That was his name at the time. So there was this guy named Passion and Fruit who was really harmless. And in Chiang Mai at that time, Durian Rider did exactly the same thing one year earlier, threatened to have a gang of people beat him up, blah, blah, blah. And when you look into it, this is actually behavior Durian Rider has done again and again. But the difference is, in most cases, Durian Rider was not in the same place as the people he was threatening. So often, you know, they were just in two separate cities in Australia, you know, so whatever. He was threatening somebody, saying a gang of carved up people would come and beat them up, and posting people's addresses on the internet, so doxing them, posting their private information. Durian Rider had done this again and again, and nobody had put him in check. Durian Rider had seriously defamed people again and again, had made criminal allegations against people again and again, nobody had put him in check. And then I was the first person who actually stood up for myself and said, no, you want to beat me up? Okay, see me when you see me. Where do you want to do this? Um, where do you want to meet? I don't mind. You know, I don't, and again, I'm not trying to fight. I'm not even trying to win. But this cannot just be bullshit that goes on unchecked forever. When he said, so Durian Ryder said he would take me to the police and he would charge me with a serious crime. He, pedophilia was in the list, but he, made, he just vaguely said some bunch of serious crimes. And I said, okay, let's meet at the, do you want to meet at the police station? Where do you want to meet? If you're going to report me to the police, let's go. Let's do this. You've threatened on the internet that you're going to put me in jail. Let's do it. That was the situation then. So he made serious criminal allegations against me, serious defamation, serious threats of violence. And I did stand up for myself. I 110% stood up for myself. So to have Jeff insulting me publicly... And in terms of where he started our private conversation, Jeff saying that my problem is I should have stood up for myself, and I like I didn't, and like I should in the present tense then, like I should be standing up for myself, and I'm not. It's like, Jeff, you obviously don't know the basic facts of what happened, whether that's because Jeff heard it from Durian Rider or someone just as crazy, just as dishonest, or I don't know, but it's like... I think you could say the opposite. You could fault me for standing up for myself too much. If, if someone said that, I'd be like, okay, that's a rational argument. You know, maybe when someone threatens to beat you up and makes false criminal allegations against you, maybe you shouldn't say, okay, let's meet up. See you. you know, maybe my, my way of handling it, uh, nobody else handled it that way. And I did, by the way, at that time, I got emails thanking me from other people whom Durian Ryder had really bullied and victimized in the past. And people who defamed in the past. I did get fan mail from people saying, thank you. You did what I couldn't do. Now, you guys already know the end of the story. The story ends with Durian Ryder totally finked out. He was a coward. Durian Ryder was a physical coward as well as an intellectual coward. He never met me. He never showed up. He neither was willing to debate me or discuss things with me. Nor, you know, he wasn't willing to patch things up positively. Nor was he willing to show up and, and kick my ass. Put it that way. He was a physical coward as well as an intellectual coward. The only reasonable request Durian Ryder made to me at that time... Okay, I'm, I'm coming back to that. Andrew, I'm coming back to that one second. Sorry, just live comments here. Um, the only reasonable request he made at the time was that I apologized to Freely. Everything else he said was totally unreasonable. 
Um, and I actually comply with that request. There still is on my channel an apology video to Freely, which is an interesting and sincere video, by the way. It's not a game. It's not bullshit. I made a sincere video saying, look, your boyfriend or ex-boyfriend asked me to apologize to you, so I'm going to do it because it makes the world a better place in a tiny, tiny way. And I'm always up to do something positive, even if you don't deserve it because, I mean, Freely did not deserve an apology video. But whatever, Durian Rider's upset. So he totally could have taken that as an out. He could have taken that as say, okay, you apologize to Freely, let's make something positive happen. But also, if he wants to catch a fade, if he wants to put his fist in my face, I offered to show up for that too, right? So uh, there's a question here from um, uh, from Andrew. Sorry, so what, what did Andrew ask? Right, so this, Andrew, I don't know if you just tuned in, but I was saying I was addressing Jeff's original criticism of me in two categories. So one of them I've just finished addressing. One of them was the category of Jeff saying uh, that I should have stood up for myself, which it makes no sense. But I can address that criticism, but as I say, it would make more sense to complain that I stood up for myself too much. I did stand up for myself, and we're still going to court, and still standing up for myself. Uh, so it's still ongoing. I didn't back down at any point. On the contrary, Durian Ryder backed down. So maybe Durian Ryder stood, should have uh, stood up for himself if he actually believed in his own cause or believed in his own words. But we all know he didn't. We all know it was completely insincere from first to last. Um, but the second category that you've just asked about is um, why was I in Chiang Mai? Now, I'd already a answered that question at the time, but Jeff, I don't think he watched a single video on my channel before defaming me. Um, so Jeff, you know, when he asked, well, why were you in Chiang Mai anyway? It was like, well, look, there are already videos on my channel about that, but also I can forward you an email I'd already written. I'd written an email several pages long that I sent to just a couple people who asked that question. And that email explains exactly why I was in Chiang Mai when I was there, why I arrived when I did, why I left when I did, because I left only a few days into the Chiang Mai festival. I arrived before it started, and I left just a few days into uh, the proceedings. So it's just not true. I wasn't there in order to attend the festival. And it had everything to do with the job I had at the time and with paperwork I needed to do in order to start that job. So the details are boring, but you know, I had to go to the hospital. I had to get... Um, uh, I had to get tests done. I had to get paperwork done for the Chinese government. And then I had to start school. I'm currently in school. This is broadcasting to you now out of a school in Kunming, China. So there's a very complete answer to that question. And I already had it written up as an email that I sent to a couple other people. And nobody, I just mentioned this boring email, but it explains completely why I was there. It had nothing to do with Durian Rider. I think it briefly alludes to also what I was doing in Chiang Mai before Durian Rider threatened my life and uh, threatened to put me in prison, etc. Sorry, just moving this so I can put my elbow on it. Um, and that also, I mean, it's boring, but like I went to the zoo, I was doing videos related to animal rights. I wasn't making videos about Durian Rider. I wasn't interested in Durian Rider, and I was meeting up with people who were already my fans who were in Chiang Mai, which there were tons of, by the way. There were lots of people there who did not support Durian Rider, but who wanted to meet with me. And again, Chiang Mai has been part of my life for years and years. I can talk about that at length or not. But not a single person who's received that email, now including Jeff Nelson, nobody's written back to me and even asked a question. Nobody's even had a doubt, like, well, I don't know, um, uh, why? You, nobody's even followed up with a question. That email completely explains why I arrived in Chiang Mai when I did, why I left when I did, and even what I was doing there before Durian Ryder made threats against me. So, <laughs> Anyway, and it's uh, this stuff again. Real life is not dramatic. Real life is not a soap opera. Real life is full of exactly those kinds of details. Like, I had to get paperwork done for the Chinese embassy. And I I've been going to Chiang Mai before Durian Rider has. I was already involved in this part of Southeast Asia in terms of my research, my career, my language study. I was, I've been going to Chiang Mai well, way over a decade. It's been a, a normal part of my life. So, you know, it's a better question, what is anyone else doing in Chiang Mai? I don't, who else speaks Thai? I speak Thai with a very strong northern dialect accent because I'm mostly speaking Laotian. I've lived in Thailand. I've lived in Laos. Uh, this has been, you know, so there's really, there's nothing surprising about me being in Chiang Mai to begin with. And then whatever, I was there for all these reasons. So I just mentioned, sorry, 
not don't want to digress from a digression. But under that second category, I was able to, without even writing it out again, say, look, Jeff, if you wanted to know about this stuff, you could have just asked me. Um, and you didn't. You never talked to me about this. You went straight to defaming me publicly on the internet. And one, you never even watched the videos on my own channel that already explain the situation. And two, you never asked me or talked to me. So this is really 17-year-old behavior. Now, as we all know, um, Jeff's whole act is really, he's still like a 16-year-old girl. I mean, now I know this about Jeff. At the time, I didn't know him. Maybe if I knew him better at the time, I wouldn't have bothered. Maybe I would have just said, Jeff, you can hang. I, you know, I, I don't want to deal with your bullshit. I didn't know how immature he was. He's shockingly immature for a grown man. But um, Jeff's whole act uh, was, uh, he was just manufacturing drama out of this stuff completely and sincerely. And he did, as mentioned publicly, you know, defame me and insult me in this kind of derivative way on the internet. And as he didn't even have the interest to watch what was already on my YouTube channel, let alone do anything else. But anyway, whatever. That's what you'd expect from a 16-year-old YouTuber. Plenty of 16-year-olds on YouTube did exactly that. So in some ways, it's not surprising. It's just surprising because he's a 60-plus-year-old 60, 60 man. So as I said before, you expect the best about people. You try to do something positive. And in my case, I'm not trying to do something positive to get views or get promotion. I'm trying to do something positive because I really think about veganism as a political movement. I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking long term about trying to make the world a better place, blah, blah, blah. All right. Now, Jeff recently has responded to me by doing the same thing his son did. I don't know how old his son is. Willie looks like a teenager. He could be 21 for all I know. But Jeff Nelson and his son, Willie Nelson, great name, um, they just improvised the worst kind of defamation possible. I mean, they just made up garbage um, on the spot, including, and this is just hilarious to me, like including claiming that I never went to university and including making statements about my divorce and my daughter, saying I'm a divorced parent, that I shouldn't have the legal right to see my own daughter. Really low. Now, again, if 16-year-old does it, it's one thing. Jeff's over 60, and he's doing it, you know, for no good reason. So Jeff repeatedly gave me permission to read his email on the Internet. He didn't just do that privately. He did it publicly on uh, YouTube. Like, he made statements on YouTube saying, well, I told Eisel to read out my email, like, to share my email, and I don't see why he didn't do that. And he did that because he felt he'd given me good advice. He just wanted, he wanted to share the good advice he gave me. Um, I don't know if I'm going to skip through this or read the whole thing, but here, here's, here's the email I got from Jeff Nelson back on July 26th, 2016. The first two sentences here are, Hi, Eisel. Thanks for your note, period. Impressive CV, period. Now, in a sense, that's the most important two sentences here. One, per, first part is thanks for your note. So you can tell it's not a very long email I sent him before. He calls it a note, and he says, impressive CV. So Jeff is pretending he doesn't know that I've been to university. He's pretending he doesn't know what kind of jobs I've had in the past. He's pretending that I've been forever unemployed. He's made up all this garbage that any 16-year-old would make up and that his own sons and daughters are now making up about me. He's defaming me in the lowest and most pathetic way possible. But the reality is, uh, and he's also pretended that my emails to him were insane, and they're not. They're totally reasonable. But the first thing he says here is, oh, thanks for your note. Impressive CV. He's seen my CV. He's seen my resume. He knows where I've been to university. He knows what kind of jobs I've done in the past. And he finds it impressive. That's his actual response when he's not pretending to be a fictional character on the internet to try to get views and attention like a teenager, which, like I say, for a man his age is especially, you know, lacking in dignity. But it's lacking dignity for everyone. If you're 16, you shouldn't do it either. I think if you're 16, your parents should take you aside and explain to you what it is you're doing wrong when you, uh, when you engage in defamation that way. Okay, so I'm going to continue reading Jeff Nelson's email to me because, again, he gave me permission. He encouraged me to share this. Um, so just there's a question asking, I think, is this pre record? No. Hide everyone in the chat. This is a live conversation. <laughs> um, so Jeff's letter continues. Why I didn't write to you before is I have a life. While you were having your drama, I was in Hawaii helping my wife, who is still recovering from a very serious accident. Last year, she was run over by a truck 
spent a few weeks in the hospital, had five surgeries, has been going from wheelchair to walker to cane to walking on her own, and she was finally in good enough shape to get away and have a vacation for the first time in a long time. So pause, so they were on vacation in Hawaii. Now, this blows my mind. Jeff, I'm sorry to hear that your wife had a car accident. I am sorry to hear that. That's sad. But that has nothing to do with why right now, i.e. right at the time this email is written, you have defamed me and insulted me and made these demands on me because he like demanded I explain why I'm in Chiang Mai at that time. Sorry, past tense, why I was in Chiang Mai at that time, etc. Like, why are you doing that in the internet? And in the way that he did. Why are you insulting me by using stupid lines like, oh, put your big boy pants on and stand up for yourself? Well, he doesn't even know I did stand up for myself. Like, what are you talking about? There is no connection and there is no justification between your wife being hit by a truck and this conduct in your part. One doesn't explain the other, not even in terms of the timeline, because they're months apart. I mean, if you were apologizing to me, which he's not, saying, I'm sorry, I made some crazy statements on the internet because I was so upset, I did it at the same time as my wife being hit by a truck. All right, there's some connection. It still doesn't really excuse your behavior. But this is just the most meaningless excuse-making. If this was what a teenager said to their professor for why they turned in an essay late, it would still be lame. It would still be stupid. But this is a man over 60 years old explaining to me why he's defamed me on the internet, why he's picked a fight with me on the internet, and also why he took Durian Rider's side at a time when nobody's supporting Durian Rider, at a time when even Vegan Gaines, who before that was close friends with Durian Rider, Vegan Gaines stood up and said, Durian Rider, this is the line, you're crossing the line. And that was the role of every moral, self-respecting vegan personality on YouTube at that time, was to stand up and be counted and say, look, there is a line. We're against this kind of violence. We're against this kind of defamation. And Jeff Nelson went to the opposite extreme and just showed he's willing to back up Durian Rider if we'll get him an extra 5,000 views. That's it. So, I mean, some people stood up and did the right thing. Some people sat down and did nothing. And some people, like Jeff, just showed that they were fame whores, which is how Jeff conducted himself. And Jeff, if you're a fame whore, the fact that your wife got hit by a truck just months prior has nothing to do with it. Or that you're, she wasn't even months prior. So, so a very long time earlier, a year earlier, she was hit by a truck. And whatever, four months before this message, she was still going through recovery. Fine. But how does this explain your behavior? How does it explain even why, your content of this email you're writing to me now? But he's writing to me, and I'd already sent him an email providing the explanation for why I was in Chiang Mai at that time, what was going on in my life. Which, again, I don't know. Why are you demanding this from me this way? It's ridiculous. But anyway, I continue reading Jeff's message here. He says, so I wasn't exactly spending a lot of time on the web, mostly just checking in from time to time on my email and Tumblr, period. Okay, again, fine, but this is the same thing with Happy Healthy Vegan and others. Don't say, well, I haven't seen any of your videos, but. Don't say, well, I didn't actually watch what Eisel said about happen what happened in Chiang Mai, but based on my having watched five minutes of what Durian Rider said, here's my opinion. This is ridiculous. And again, whether you're 16 years old or 6 years old, Okay, great explanation, Jeff. So over this period of months, you came to the conclusion that I was in the wrong. When again, even people like Vegan Gaines figured out that I was in the right. But Jeff didn't. This is the approach you took. It's not an excuse, Jeff. Before you take that position, you could take the time to watch the one video on my channel that, for example, in just a couple of minutes, shows the screenshots of what Duran Ryder said to me, the threats he made, the defamation, that he was going to beat me up, take me to the police station, etc. You didn't even do that, Jeff. You just decided to strike a pose to see if you could get some attention on the net like a teenager. So, uh, Jeff writes some really insulting stuff to me here for no reason. He says, Is any of this registering with you, Eisel? Question mark. Or are you just going to ignore and go back to thinking about yourself and whatever it is you want? Very insulting, very teenage language for no reason. Because, Jeff, you never stepped up with me. You insulted me publicly for no good reason. And I replied by providing you with the answers to your questions, even though they were unreasonable. One, what was I doing in Chiang Mai? Two, why didn't I stand up for myself? The answer is I did stand up for myself. Because he didn't know the basic facts of the case. And this is his response. It's really insulting and stupid and childish. 
All right. Um, <laughs> maybe my wife and that situation is more important than you and your situation. That's what Jeff says. Jeff, I didn't ask you to get involved. You insulted me publicly on the internet. If your wife is more important, that would explain why you said nothing. But you started this fight with me, and you are failing to recognize that. You're pretending I started something with you when I didn't. Um, he continues, this is all obviously super important to you. So I could ask you the same thing you asked me. Why didn't you email me sooner if you felt that was so important in your situation? I hate this kind of thing. Like, oh, well, this is all super important. Dude, I, I did a fundraiser. I raised more than $6,500 in one day. For all of veganism, that's really an interesting landmark. That's pretty important. That's pretty interesting. A whole bunch of people stood up and said, during Ryder, here's the line. You crossed the line. And they were willing to donate money to my legal fund to take him to court just to demonstrate that point. And Jeff, you weren't one of them. That's okay. You can say nothing. But why insult me and defame me on the internet? Because now he's really gotten into, you know, totally ludicrous defamation. <sighs> um, anyway, so, you know, there's some other insulting nonsense here. I just feel like skipping over it because it... Uh, just stuff that makes no sense. Um... So, I mean, like, he says something where he says, like, guilt by association is abominable. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Jeff? You think I'm treating you as guilty by association? I never did any of this stuff to you, Jeff. I never came at you. You came at me. Anyway, he then says, anyhow, I'd rather communicate with you when you've cooled down. If you're interested in anything that I have to say, I really don't want to do a Skype because I don't know you. I don't know if it would be taped or whatever, but it doesn't establish a lot of trust. When you write to me, I respond and then discover you've done a silly video about me, which I'm not going to watch. Again, I love this self-righteous thing of like, oh, well, I haven't watched any videos on your channel, but great. If there's something specific you want to talk to me about and not just vent, why don't you give that a shot? This is the, the brilliance of Jeff Nelson. So, I mean, you know, the guy started this thing with me on the net. I could read my reply to him. But, I mean, the fundamental thing is, talking to Jeff Nelson this way, he was just too stupid to understand what was going on. The whole, the reality of the situation was, before he communicated with me privately, he was too stupid to know what happened in Chiang Mai, what Durian Rider did, why hundreds of people donated money to my legal cause, why so many people, including Vegan Gain, stood up in support. He did not know what happened. And he struck a pose on it. He tried to make a, an extreme, uh, you know, edgy statement just to get views and attention. And he insulted me. And then after I replied to him, after I gave him reasonable answers to his unreasonable questions, he was still just too stupid to know what was going on. Um... I, anyway, I could read my reply to him. I mean, I'm just going to pull out a sentence here because I wrote a reply to that message. Um, I, I point out to him, you made two videos that directly pertain to Durian Ryder, Freely, and myself. Two of them. So you cannot say that you don't have time or that you're not involved, etc. So just pause. If your point is you're constantly taking care of your, your wife who got hit by a truck... You have time to make multiple videos addressing this issue, but not to watch the videos on my channel that even say what the issue was or what happened. He had already made, at this point, two videos on this topic. So I said, you know, I never lifted a finger to make you involved. That was a decision you made. He made the decision to get involved. And yes, again, your response is bullshit, and you disrespected me repeatedly, both in the video and in written comments. Those are decisions you made as a grown man. I didn't ask him to get involved. I didn't do anything that involved him. He chose to get involved, and he put in the time and effort to, at this point already, make two videos, and he made written comments on YouTube and on his blogs, etc. I had nothing to do with that. He, Again, I think he was just like a teenager trying to get attention, trying to get views, without even figuring out what the situation was. I then say further, again, I'm just taking a quote from this email. I said, you have chosen consistently in public statements to trivialize what Durian Ryder did. Serious crimes, seriously bad for veganism, apart from being seriously bad for myself personally. 
You have made lame excuses, and you have been dismissive, contemptuous, and insulting toward me publicly. I realize that has the potential to change right now, and that the emails you're sending me are much more thoughtful by contrast. And I appreciate that. However, I'm being honest about the basis we're working from. So I'll just, I'll leave it there. But even that statement, it shows how reasonable I'm willing to be in trying to build something positive people, whether we're talking about Vegan Ava or Jeff or any of these people, where it says, look, actually, this is even true about Klaus, the guy who does plant-based news. When I talked to Klaus, I said, look, the point is not that I'm complaining. You know, this can move forward positively. We can work together positively. Um, but it's going to start by being me being honest with you about the basis that we're working from now. So the basis is you've insulted me publicly on the internet or you've believed a bunch of lies that Durian writers said without questioning them or like in Jeff's case, the basis is that you continue to make videos attacking me and about my situation without watching the videos that are on my channel first or without talking to me privately, et cetera, et cetera. That's the basis we're going to move forward from. Now, again, you're talking to a 60-year-old man, man over 60, uh, maybe I'm wildly optimistic to think, hey, maybe he can set this aside and work forward positively. It would have been the easiest thing in the world for Jeff to write back to that and say, hey, you know what? You're right. I was misinformed. Jeff could have written back and just said, hey, you know what? Um, I believed a bunch of rumors and lies on the internet, including what Durian Ryder said. You're right. And you know what? What's really important here is veganism. And I've taken the time and looked at some of the videos on your channel on About La Ciel, and I realize you're making real content that's really about veganism. It's not just about drama, or it's not just about rumors and gossip and nonsense. He could have taken the time and said, hey, I realize that people like Vegan Gains stepped up and made the decision to support you for a good reason. I realize that people donated $6,500 to your legal fund for a good reason. Hey, you know what? This is a real situation. And I stumbled into it without knowing what was going on. And I made some videos that just don't really make any sense. And I'm sorry. For a man over 60, that's not asking a lot. I mean, that's, <laughs> this is not some new and unseen level of maturity uh, for him to be capable of. But as we all know, Jeff never did that. On the contrary, he really doubled down on defaming me and ultimately on supporting Durian Rider of saying Durian Ryder's right in a situation where nobody familiar with the facts, nobody who's seen the one video on my channel giving you the screenshots of just what Durian Ryder said, nobody supports what Durian Ryder did. Defamation is wrong. And it's bad for me. It's bad for the movement. It's bad for veganism. It's bad for YouTube. <laughs> you know, defamation as a crime, we're talking about criminal defamation, is bad and it's wrong. We're not even going to debate that, right? Um, threats of violence are bad and they're wrong and Durian Ryder had done that again and again I wasn't his first victim I probably won't be his last so there was an outright call to say um, we need to draw the line we need to stand up and say no more because Durian Ryder is going to keep doing this until someone stands up and says you can't do it anymore because Durian Ryder, from his own perspective, was making money and getting fame and getting attention and getting the approval of people like Jeff Nelson by engaging in defamation and threats of violence. And that's why the fundraiser was called Vegans Against Violence and Defamation. And again, I, I had no interest in asking Jeff Nelson to stand up and make a statement in support of my cause. I had never heard of the guy at that point. I didn't recognize the name. Couldn't care less. But Jeff, he, it's not just that he didn't support it. It's not just that he was silent. He went on the other extreme where he thought this was his chance to stunt. This was his chance to get a little bit of attention from the young folks to be young and hip and trendy uh, by insulting me. So that's it, guys. That's the whole backstory. And the problem is, with someone like Jeff, when I talked to him, I assumed he was being sincere. I assumed that when he asked me, well, what were you doing in Chiang Mai anyway? I assumed that was sincere interest. And if it was, then when he got the factual answer to the question, that would have changed his position and perspective. This is the difference between a troll and dealing with a sincere person in politics, right? But when I provided the answer to that question, and he recognized it was factional, he recognized I was in the right, it changed nothing. Jeff continued being a complete, dishonest, drama-mongering asshole after he had the facts provided to him that he requested. And he didn't request them by emailing me. He requested them by insulting me publicly. So that's who Jeff is, and that's the game he's playing. 
and his kids are playing the same game and worse under his tutelage, which is really very sad. On Vegan Cheetah's channel, I saw Jeff's son, Willie, seriously engaging in defamation against me. You know, defamation by the criminal uh, definition of defamation. I don't mean serious in the sense that it was... I mean, he was joking around, obviously. He was just making stuff up off his head. If you were Jeff... Yeah, hi, soy. I'm talking about Jeff Nelson. If you are Jeff Nelson, if you were this young man's son, it is absolutely your role to take your son aside and say, look, you can't do this. It's a crime. It's immoral. It harms people. It's bad for you. It's bad for the person you're defaming. It's bad for veganism as a movement. It's even bad for YouTube as a medium. This is bad and it's wrong and you have to stop. That's what a father should do, a father over 60 years old. But Jeff Nelson can never tell his son that because Jeff Nelson himself is engaged in exactly the same game. He's acting like a, a, a chicken-headed teenager. He's acting like a complete moron and doing the same thing and just making up defamation and insults off the top of his head. Uh, both in situations where he knows nothing about what's going on and in this situation where he's lying about what I said to him in email, what he said to me in email. He's lying about my job, my career, my divorce, my relationship with my, my own daughter. He's Jeff Nelson himself as the father is going for the lowest of the low level of, of defamation. So what do you expect his son to do? His son is just as bad or worse. That is really sad to see. Now, in terms of his relationship with his daughters, um... You know, I do think, to put it bluntly, that if your daughters, if you're wealthy, as Jeff boasts he is, he's very proud, he's very happy to boast about how much money he's got. If you're wealthy, your daughters should not be doing a commercial for Taco Bell. I can understand. If it's straight up poverty and you just own it, I would totally sympathize. If someone who was vegan came on the internet and just said, hey, they're vegan, but they're flat broke, and they had no choice but to work at McDonald's or do an advertisement for McDonald's, I'd say, yo, I respect the player, I respect, respect the game, I respect the struggle, and that's it. Poverty is poverty. Some people do not have a better choice, do not have a better option, but we all know that's not true about Jeff. Jeff is boasting, even while he's insulting me about how rich he is. So why are your daughters, given their status as leaders, leaders in the vegan community, leaders who don't believe in ethical veganism, leaders who don't believe in cruelty-free veganism, I mean, it just had those clips in that video, they're figures who are making statements that mark them out as being almost anti-vegan or anti-ethical veganism. They're, I guess they're dietary vegans or whatever you want to say. I guess they're just plant-based. Why do you have your daughters prostituting themselves in videos like the Lick My Body Challenge if you're rich? Why do you have your daughters selling out the core tenets of veganism by making an advertisement for Taco Bell? Yes, I think that's shameful. Yes, I think that's something meaningful to engage in critique of. And I'm not the first to do it. I'm not going to be the last. And I've heard Jeff's reply to that. I've, Unlike Jeff, I don't come on and say, oh, well, I haven't seen anything on his channel, but here's my opinion. No, I've heard Jeff's explanation, and I've heard Nina and Randa's explanation. And you know my steez. I'm about keeping it real. To me, their explanation is garbage. Whereas, as I said, if someone just came out and talked about straight-up poverty, of course I would understand that. And there are vegans in the military, and there are vegans who work at McDonald's. I've talked to all kinds of vegans who do struggle with poverty or, or limited money. And, you know, I myself, I know you guys don't want to hear it, but uh, contrary to many rumors, I'm not affluent. It is hard for me to feed myself, even here in China. And it was hard in Saskatchewan, and it was hard in many of the places I live. I know that struggle. But this is not about the struggle. Sadly, this is about a man who's had an incredibly negative impact on veganism as a movement in the past couple of years and who's still having a negative impact and who's creating conflict and drama out of nothing because he's more than 60 years old but he still has the mentality of a teenager and some of the most direct uh, influence we've seen him have is on his own son and on his own daughters and then the impact they have on veganism so no i'm not about to apologize for questioning that I'm not about to apologize for bringing that issue forward. And I'm also not about to apologize for the fact that at a time when Jeff had insulted me on the internet repeatedly, months ago, I still approached him with an open mind and an open heart to see if we could make something positive happen. When people do insult me on the internet again and again, even vegan Ava, even terrible people who've said terrible things about me, insulting things about me and my daughter and my ex-wife, people who've taken it all the way low, I still do approach them with an open heart and open mind for the cause to see if uh, to see if something positive can come from it. But with people like Jeff, a lot of the time the answer is simply no.